Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Daryl. I'll be your critic this evening. Today is Wednesday, March the 4th. And today, according to uh, his Facebook page, is Hoxley Workman's birthday. So, in honor of Hoxley's birthday, uh, we're going to be reviewing his very first album, For Him and the Girls. Uh, Hawks of Workman, as you can see from the very, very poor condition of this CD that I bought at one of his shows at, oh, I want to say the Horseshoe Tavern, way back in 1999. Um, I was looking at the CD, um, and I had beer spilt on it, so it got all sticky and got all gross, and then when I tried to take it out, it had dried and stuck to the um, jewel case. I love this album. If you like your music very much on the quirky side, slightly cabaret-ish, slightly rock and roll, if you're looking for equal parts Queen and Tom Waits and a little bit of the Smiths in there, then Hoxley Workman is the guy for you. Now, he has been making music um, for himself since... 97, 98. This is his fuller first full-length album to come out, um, entitled For Him and the Girls, and he has recorded one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other solo records, and he most recently has been on tour with his band, uh, <laughs> entitled Mounties, and that is kind of a Canadian rock supergroup, and that includes Ryan Dahl of Age of Electric, um, and, uh, the singer from Hot Hot Heat, whose name is escaping me right now, and I feel bad about that, except I'm not really a fan of Hot Hot Heat. But Mounties is great, so there's another record that you should also check out. Um, but this record, I'm sorry, anybody who watches is like, well, this guy's really unprofessional. He can't even remember the name of the singer from Hot Hot Heat. Well, we're not talking about Hot Hot Heat right now, we're talking about Hoxie Workman, and his very first record for him and the girls. This record is in easily top 15 for me for my life. If you whittle down my collection down to the 15 records that I would have the hardest time letting go of and never listening to again, um, this album would win out over so many other records in my collection. For Him and the Girls contains such irreverent wit and joy and sadness that is... Um, so perfectly displayed without being cloying, without being maudlin. Um, it's, 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 it's equal parts Neil Young, equal parts, like I said already, Tom Waits, equal parts cabaret style music, equal parts Queen, equal parts... Um, you know, when he first came out, there was a lot of comparisons with, to him and, and, say, someone like Jeff Buckley, um, which... Uh, I, I uh, understand that Hoxley was not interested in being compared because he really was making music very much for himself um, and, and wasn't interested in making music for anyone else and, and wasn't interested in, in trying to live up to anyone's expectations about what he should sound like and what he shouldn't sound like. He just likes making music and... You know, over the years, he's had some hits and misses. Um, and I can say that as a fan. There's there's a few tracks on a few albums that I think, eh, maybe you should have left that off. Um, but he's prolific, and he is always a joy to see live. Anyways, for him and the girls, this is a shorter one today. But for him and the girls, by Hoxley Workman, happy birthday, Hoxley. It's always a joy to see you in concert, and it's always a joy to receive new music from you. His very first record is definitely his best, and if you're looking for some some ultra-important uh, Canadian rock and roll slash folk rock slash whatever it is that you want to call that Hoxley does, uh, pick up for him and the girls by Hoxley Workman. Thank you. Rock on with your socks on, and these are my animals. And... Uh, <laughs> I've been your critic this evening. My name is Daryl Bianco. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.